Okay, so today we're going to talk about retargeting. Uh, this is basically how we get the animation from one character and transfer it over to another character. Um, you can use a number of programs to do this. I usually use Motion Builder. Uh, but today we're going to run through how you can do this with Reillusion 3D Exchange. So the way this works, uh, we're going to set up both our source character and our target character in 3D Exchange using a process called characterization. Um, this basically allows us to transfer the data from one character to another as well as import the original FBX animation for a specific character. Um, so by doing this we can load the FBX file data into one character, convert it into the iClone motion file and then use that to uh, animate a new character uh, and then we can export the um, FBX file from that. Okay, so first we're going to import our Android character, so I'll just drag him in. On the window that pops up, uh, you'll need to make sure that this um, option, ignore namespace, remains unchecked. Uh, the reason for this is that our FBX files um, all have a namespace. That's basically a name um, appended in front of all the bone names. Uh, this is so that when you use it in programs like Motion Builder, um, it doesn't get confused if you have lots of different skeletons with uh, similar bone names. So I'll click OK. And here's our model. Um, because his bone hierarchy is not the standard icon bone hierarchy, we're going to have to convert him to a non-standard character. So I'll click this button here and it comes up. Now this is the template system where each of these bones represent uh, a bone on the kind of standard iClone skeleton. So we need to map these so that the Android man's bones map to these template. To do this, you click on each bone and you select the corresponding bone on the model that you're importing. So at the moment, I'll click his feet Legs. This is a bit of a fiddly process, but fortunately, you only need to do this once for each character um, because you can export the file at the end uh, as an iClone avatar, which you can then just drag in. It's also possible to um, save the, a template characterization profile here. This process is called characterization, and there's a very similar process in Motion Builder 2, and probably a few other applications that I'm not so familiar with. Um, get his arms here. Set his chest up here. We'll do the eyes. shoulders. Head. Okay, we now have to do his hands. These can be a bit fiddly too, so I'll try and do them quickly. his other hand as well.
right, so we've now mapped all of his bones. We can quickly check that we haven't got anything back to front, like maybe he's got the arm switched around or anything by testing one of the test motions. So I'll just do the general head calibration motion. So this looks all right. Okay, so we'll quickly check the other options. There's a few others. I'll select a T pose here so we can see him as a T pose. I'll move the hands there. These indicators here are for floor contacts, They're so that when the character hits the floor, um, the hands and feet can automatically adjust to where the floor is. So that's the wrist, the knuckles, and the end of the finger there. I might just change that bit. Okay, push that back a bit, that's probably better. You need to do the same thing for the feet. So the front looks miles off. So, oh, yeah, that's about right. And I'll change the side slightly. There's one or two other options on this tab too. If you want to uh, make him lean forward or back, which sometimes can be useful, um, you can do that. You can also adjust the spacing of his feet and his height. We've got options and the way that the shoulder rotations are extracted can be adjusted here. So I think we're ready, so we'll click Convert. And he's now set up as an iClone format avatar. At this point, it's probably a good idea to export him so that he can be saved in again quickly later without having to go through the whole characterization process. So we select him, we'll give him a name, we'll just save him to the desktop, and we'll click OK. Okay, so now we've got our character set up, uh, we can drag one of the FBX animations in to the motion window here. So I'll drag in this dance animation. It's 60 frames a second, I'll let it smooth the curve up, click OK. And it should import it. I click on it here. See this WAP dance here. Okay, so if we click Add to Perform, I'll just rename it here. Anything that appears in this Perform Editor can now be exported. So we can export this as an iClone file, export the animation, I don't want to export the geometry. Export it as an RL motion file, save it to the desktop again. Click OK. So that is now exported as an iClone file, which we can then import later on a new model, which I'll show next. Okay, so now we've made our iClone uh, motion file. We can import a new character. I'll import um, mocap, mocap girl. Um, this is a character I've created and I've already characterized her in um, 3D Exchange. Uh, so we don't need to go through that process again, but it, the process was basically exactly the same as we did with the Android character though. So you, know, you may need to do that um, if you're importing your own characters. Um, so once we've got her loaded, I can import the motion file that we saved out. So we've got this dance here now. Uh, you may notice that the um, thumbs are sticking out a bit. That's to do with the original T-poses used when we characterize the models 
um, when you import models for characterization, you should try and make sure that the, they are both in exactly the same um, position. So there's some options we can change here as well. If we go to modify, we'll see there's various options we've got that we can change. For example, we can make her lean back more. Let's select preview. Okay, can lean forward, back. We can lower down if we want the animation lower to the ground. It's quite fun. Uh, one thing that's particularly useful is you'll see that the shoulders sometimes after you've retargeted could sometimes be raised up too much or raised or, or too low. So you can use the slider here to lower the shoulders down so they're not sticking up or if is the opposite is true, you can raise them up so they're much higher. Um, to that, to about there. I'll stop that and I'll click OK there. And it'll just take a moment while it kind of compiles all of those changes together, um, then it will appear in the viewport. So here we go, we've got a new animation now. Okay, so we'll see it up here. It's given it a little zero at the end there. So if we add this to um, the perform section, anything in here can be saved. So we could save this out as a um, iClone file if we want, and then we could load it into iClone or back into here. Um, or we can actually save the whole FBX out now. Um, this is in the pipeline edition of 3D Exchange. You can do this. Um, and you can click export, we'll include the animation. Uh, there's various options here, uh, which will optimize it for specific platforms. Um, you can, of course, change the frame rate. rate. Our um, standard FBX is a, 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 at 60 frames per second. Uh, for games, you might just want 30 frames per second. Um, but you can select the option here. There's various other options that um, you might want to explore. Uh, we'll save it to the desktop and I'll click OK. Now we've got the so we've got the FBX model now with the animation on it, with the changes we've made exported to an FBX file that we can load into another application. So here we are in Motion Builder. I've imported the FBX animation that we just exported from 3D Exchange. Um, so I'll hit play and we can see now we've got the animation with our changes working in Motion Builder.